Hey guys, welcome back. Welcome back to another week of what's for dinner videos. I hope you guys enjoy this. If you're new, hello. My name is Sarah and I make lots of what's for dinner videos, cook with me videos, clean with me videos, day in the life. I'm just starting. <laughs> lots of plus size fashion, beauty, mom videos. If that's stuff that you like, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button and follow along with us and me and our little family here on YouTube. This week is a good week. I've tried a lot of different new recipes and I've been really, really pleasantly surprised with how they all turn out. Of course, if I do use a recipe from like Pinterest or something like that, I always try and remember to link it below. So definitely check the description box if you're looking for a specific recipe. Um, and so we got a dessert, we got a cocktail this week, we got a bunch of other different stuff. So I hope you guys enjoy. Let's get started with the dinners. All right, so the first thing we're actually starting with is my birthday. My mom makes me the same meal every year because it's one I request and it's homemade egg rolls. Guys, these are the best egg rolls you will ever have in your life. She also made homemade fried rice and we had watermelon on the side. This was just so good, man. And she makes so many egg rolls, so we have some for leftovers. They are good hot, they are good cold, they are good reheated, they are good all the time forever. I've never had someone not like these egg rolls. And I'm not a big egg roll fan in the first place, but these are amazing. We had the La Choy sweet and sour sauce, which is a great sweet and sour sauce from the store. And it was a wonderful birthday. I had so much fun and I can't believe I'm already turning 28, but or am 28 now, but it was so much fun. And I will leave the uh, written recipe below for the egg rolls if you're interested in making them. I highly recommend it, guys. Everybody asks for this recipe every time she does it or if I bring them to places. They're amazing. And the fried, ri fried rice was delicious as well. And it was a really, really great birthday. My mom also spoils me and makes homemade cake. Sort of homemade, she does use a box mix of the Funfetti, um, and then she makes homemade chocolate icing. I'm so picky about cakes because her cakes are so good. I very rarely like cakes from other places or other people because I think my mom's cake are out of this world. They're so yummy and it was, it totally hit the spot. The next night we um, actually went out of town with our uh, two of our best friends and we stayed in a cabin. So the first night we actually just had um, like a chippy dippy party with just a bunch of different appetizers and I'm making homemade ranch. Um, there's my husband. I use buttermilk. Buttermilk really adds a different consistency and just taste to it. Definitely try it if you haven't tried it before. It's just creamier and delicious. Then I just use mayo and the pack of ranch dressing and it was amazing. We also made queso and we use Velveeta cubes of course and then two cans of Rotel, one mild and one hot, and then sausage. Um, she ground all that sausage up, tossed it together in the crock pot, and let it melt for about 30 minutes until the cheese obviously was super melty. Um, she didn't drain the meat. You can totally do that if you would like to, if you want to keep it a little bit leaner, but you're eating Velveeta, so honestly, really. Um, I love the grease. I think it added to the flavor, but if you don't like it or if it hurts your stomach, then totally drain it out. But this was delicious. We had it with uh, scoops chipped chips and I actually used fire um, flaming flaming hot Doritos or Cheetos and dipped it in oh my gosh guys this was the most beautiful place it was raining all the next day I highly recommend if you live near Broken Bow and can take a trip oh it was miraculous it was so nice and for this night, we made um, salad and pasta. This is the sweet kale smart food salad that I show you guys all the time. It's delicious. And this is the Butoni uh, mushroom and glotti that I also show you guys all the time. And we just put the Butoni pesto on top with a little bit of salt and pepper. This is a crowd pleaser. Every single time I make it for other people, they think it's like the most amazing experienced dish. And it's literally the easiest and so cheap. Next night, we are actually making um, a potato soup in the middle of July um, and this is from Carla McKenzie here on YouTube I just followed her recipe and then doctored it up a little bit so you need shredded hash browns um, chicken broth I had a can of chicken broth and then like a huge you know carton of chicken broth um, a pack of cream cheese this was half um, like fat I would probably use the full fat next time and then a can of cream of chicken soup. So you're just throwing um, in the shredded hash browns. You're gonna top that with the um, chicken broth. And then on top of that, 
um, is the cream chicken soup and you kind of just break the frozen hash browns down and bring it all to a boil. Now I added a bunch of garlic powder, onion powder, I added cayenne pepper a little bit later, I added some seasoned salt. I definitely doctored it up and I think this is, great. This is a really great base recipe and you can really decide on how you want to do it. We liked our spicy so I added cayenne pepper, some Tabasco later totally up to you how you want to do it but this was super yummy and even though it was summertime it ended up like just totally hitting all the right spots and was really easy it'll be perfect as we transition into fall and you need more like fall recipes but basically you just bring it all to a boil and once it's all boiling you then add in your cream cheese and let it melt I then once again topped it with Tabasco sauce and we use um, everything bagels to dip it in so I just toasted the everything bagels up and then we just dipped it in the soup and this was so so delicious we topped it with some cheddar cheese and I highly recommend guys if you just want an easy yummy meal this is totally it next time I think that I will try like um, the potatoes of Brian or like the cubed potatoes just to see kind of what that's like but I will totally be making this again and I feel like you could totally docker it up and add vegetables and do so much with it it's such an easy and good recipe the next night, we're making like sausage cabbage bowls. <laughs> um, so I'm using this Dicky smoked sausage, it's cheddar jalapeno. You need a um, russet potato or whatever potato really you have on hand and a head of cabbage. Now um, we use the Dicky smoked sausage, you totally don't have to use that one. It typically calls for kibasa, it's the traditional one to use, but I just like to try different sausages and that sausage is delicious. It is pretty spicy though. Um, my husband did think this dish was relatively uh, spicy. I totally liked it, but I've been really into spice lately. Um, but I would use kielbasa or something milder if you are not into spicy meats. Next, I just um, peeled the potato and diced it on up, and then I'm just gonna pan fry that with some butter in my pan, and I'm gonna continue using this pan for the whole entire recipe. So I just pan fried this, and then I did season it with some garlic salt, um, pepper, a little probably garlic powder, onion powder, my usual season, seasonings that I use in all of my videos. I typically use just on about everything. Um, anyway, I'm going to angle cut this. I don't even know what to, is it Julian? Um, I'm not, uh, not Gordon Ramsay. I, uh, just cut that on an angle, and once those potatoes got nice and crispy, um, I then threw in that sausage. It's already pre-cooked, so you just have to warm it through, and while that was warming through, I then, um, shredded up my cabbage, and once those, um, sausages were completely warmed through, I then just popped the shredded cabbage on top and it cooks down really easily and really fast. You don't have to add any sort of liquids or broth or anything like that. Um, the heat kind of takes care of it and like the grease um, from the cabbage and all like the cooking juices just kind of help uh, shrink it down as well. And then once it's totally cooked through, I liked mine with still a tiny bit of crunch. I didn't want it super soggy and floppy. Um, then you just pop on the potatoes on top and give it a nice stir. You could have easily added more vegetables to this, or you could have done like an onion, what have you. you this is such an easy customizable dish as well. Um, we just had it for dinner in a bowl and that was about it. It was super, super yummy and delicious. It's such a basic thing and it doesn't seem like it's gonna taste that great. Um, but if you season it well and it's, it's so yummy and so filling and so warm and comforting. Another really great transitioning to fall dish. The next night, I was trying out this French onion broccoli cheese casserole from Plain Chicken. I love that cooking blog. There are so many amazing recipes. Um, so we were trying this out. I just took a whole head of broccoli and I just diced up the florets a little bit not diced um, just kind of cut them up I think next time I would cut them up a tiny bit smaller um, but I did try to chop them up as good as I could at the time I threw them in a um, bowl and then on top of that I took a can of cream of mushroom soup and pop that on top and then you take a cup of the french onion dip this is made with sour cream you want the french onion dip that is like cold and re in the refrigerated section that's actually like a chip dip not like the powdered powdered one or ones you can get down like the soup aisle um, i took a cup of that and then i took about three-fourths of the bag of uh, cheese. This is about a cup and a half, and you can use whatever cheese you like. We used, used shredder, shredded sharp cheddar, and then I used about half of the bag of French onions as well, and then I just mixed this all up and together, and I 
snacked on a couple French onions, if we're being honest, those things are delicious. Um, and then I just pop this in a casserole dish. Now, if you're gonna serve this for more than one or two or three or four people, I would double it. I feel like it didn't make quite enough and it went by so fast because it was so delicious. Along with this, we used a boneless ham steak. These are so inexpensive and they're super yummy. Once again, this is fully cooked, so you just have to warm it through. So I just popped it with a little bit of cooking spray on a pan. Um, and while that was cooking, I spread out that stuff in the casserole dish, put it in the oven for about 25 minutes until it got warm and bubbly. And then I topped it with the rest of that cheese and the rest of those French onions. I put it back in the oven for about five to 10 more minutes until the cheese and the onions got a little bit crispier and melted. And it was so good. My husband loved this. I loved this. I think this would be an amazing crowd pleaser. And another thing you could change up with different vegetables. Really yummy. We had it with the ham on the side. And then I loved my ham with applesauce. So I have this mango peach applesauce from Mott's, which is really, really yummy. And this was such a good meal as well. I really liked it. And I highly recommend that casserole. All right, so this next night we are making breakfast burritos. So I just used about 10 eggs. I didn't make the full um, dozen. I think next time I would probably added the full dozen though. I then took this Jimmy Dean Country Mild Sausage. I really liked this one because it had like pepper in it and it just had like this little bit of like um, kick. I really liked it. You of course can use whatever sausage you like or whatever protein or non-protein you want to use. Um, we used cheese and then I had some of these for the sides we have curry ketchup and the wasabi sauce. The wasabi sauce was delicious. But the curry ketchup, I would not purchase again. It was pretty expensive. So if you have a recipe to make curry ketchup because it sounds so yummy and totally up our alley, let me know below because I'd love to try it. I browned up the sausage and while that was doing it, I worked on my eggs. And with my scrambled eggs, I love to add some sort of creamy element, whether it be milk, um, cream, sometimes even a little bit of mayo, and I whisked all that together and then put it in my hot skillet and made my scrambled eggs. I like them nice and fluffy, and I feel like that milk really helps add to that. So if you've never done that before, highly recommend, really easy to do, and they taste really, really nice. Once I got my sausages nice and browned, I then um, continued working on my eggs, and once they were nice and fluffy and ready to go, we assembled our burritos. Now, I made monstrous burritos. You could easily make these way smaller and freeze them um, for breakfast and stuff. I just ended up making monstrous burritos. I made two burritos each thinking like, oh, that'll be totally fine. And we could only get through one burrito because they were so giant. First, top them with the egg mixture. And of course, the... Um, I was gonna say spinach, sausage, and then cheese on top. I folded it. I actually had to like Google how to fold burritos because I can never do it right and I still don't, didn't do it super great, but I at least tried um, and you'll see me kind of giving like a half thumbs up because it was not perfect, but it was folded in and they stayed folded um, while we ate them. But of course, you could easily add different proteins or different vegetables to this. I think mushrooms, bell peppers, potatoes, all of those things would taste great in these things. Um, these are just such an easy, cheap meal and they were super filling. We still, like I said, had one totally left over for the next day and they were just as good reheated and I think they would freeze really well. We also had three different sauces on the side, that wasabi sauce, which I know sounds gross with potatoes and our meat with a breakfast burrito, but it was delicious. Ketchup and picante and these were amazing guys. Highly recommend made breakfast burritos for dinner. Totally hit the spot. All right, here are my July teas from Sips By. If you don't know what Sips By is, I already shared it in a couple of my What's For Dinners back, um, but this is a tea service that's curated towards you and the type of teas that you like. They give you 15 plus tea cups that you can have, cups of tea, um, every month, and it is so nice, especially if you're trying to kind of gravitate away um, the, from the coffee and you want to try tea or if you just really love tea or hot beverages in general. This month there was a bunch of um, English breakfast teas, morning teas, um, like this one which is the organic tea. 
Moringa, I'm terrible about saying that one, and tons of matcha. I love matcha, and all of the matcha is gone from this month. I drink every single one because they're delicious. Um, and this is my Stranger Things mug, which I got for my birthday. It's my, one of my favorite gifts. But if you're interested in trying to buy, use code Sarah5 to get $5 off your first box. I am not sponsored or anything. They just send these for me to try out, and I love sharing them with you because I genuinely love this. All right, tea. guys. So I normally don't come on when I'm doing my What's For Dinner videos because... It's normally loud and chaotic and there's kids running and it's just, it's a mess. So, and I normally always have music on. It's just, it's just a thing. But, um, I'm at my mom's house right now, my mom's and dad's house. If you've been watching my What's For Dinners for a while, you know that we have Friday night dinners. Very Gilmore Girl style, just, you know, less fighting and self-loathing and, you know, Emily and Richard. Or Lorelai and Rory for that matter. Anyway, but I decided that I would film... I'll show you what I'm making tonight. So I'm making a potato salad um, that I found on Pinterest and a like toffee cake that I also found on Pinterest that looks super delicious. I'm normally not a baker, so we'll see how this goes, but it looks easy enough, so fingers crossed. So let's get cooking. All right, so for the ingredients, we're gonna need one box of yellow cake mix, two bag bags of the Heath milk chocolate toffee bits, a can of uh, sweetened condensed milk, one egg, and then six tablespoons of melted butter. Okay, so we're starting with adding the whole bag of cake mix. Okay, we're adding the six tablespoons of melted butter. And the one egg. So now I am going to just evenly spread out the um, cake mix, cake batter, and then we're going to sprinkle on top the two bags of the Heath toffee bits. Um, by the way, if you are wondering where this baker's from, I get a lot of questions a lot of times on like the different stuff that I use and stuff like that. This is from Temptations. It's from QVC. If you guys know me, you know I love me some QVC, but it's super cute. So I'm just going to spread this out evenly and press it down in an even layer. So now that we have the cake mix and the Heath topping bits on it, we're going to take our can of sweetened condensed milk and evenly spread it on top. Alright, now we bake them for 25 to 30 minutes at 350. Here it is, oh, it's bubbling, glory goodness. Probably left it in just a, a hair too long, but I, it smells phenomenal, so I'm excited. So for a fun summer cocktail, you'll need obviously a cute cup, ice, one shot of your preferred vodka, Limeade or lemonade. We use Simply Limeade, it's super, super good. And a splash of maraschino cherry juice and a couple of cherries. Mix it together. Basically, it's a cherry limeade spiked. Um, obviously you can get cherry lime and juice, it's already made. I just think that the maraschino ch cherries add a more authentic flavor to it, and this is super, super yummy. 
All right, so this is a warm style kind of um, potato salad. I found this recipe on Pinterest. It is from Sweet Baby Ray's. Um, and you need to take about a pound. I used a pound of red potatoes, but once again, if you have a lot of people, you're probably gonna wanna use more. Same thing goes for the bacon. I use only about three strips, but if you have more people, I would use more. Um, but I just cut this up with cooking shears. And then I sauteed up that bacon and browned it up in a pan while the potatoes were cooking. Alongside this, we had Ritz chicken. Um, super easy, there's a bunch of different recipes for this type of thing on Pinterest. But basically, it was just thin chicken breast, not super dense or super thick, um, dipped in egg wash, and then coated with Ritz cracker crumbs um, and some garlic salt. And then on top, you just put bunch of cubes of butter. This is some of the best chicken I have ever had. If you've never done it, you have to try it. You put it in the oven for about 30 minutes on 375 and you will not be sorry. My kids loved it. I loved it. My whole family loved it. Try it, guys. Next, after the uh, bacon was all sauteed up and the potatoes were all drained, I chopped up a red onion. Then I mixed that um, potatoes and uh, bacon all together and kind of cooked them through and then I added the uh, red onion on top as well and kind of warmed it up as well and once that was nice and warmed through not overcooked or anything I then added some sweet baby Ray's honey mustard of course you can use whatever honey mustard you have or if you want to homemade made your home make your own homemade one. Um, I actually really love this honey mustard and I'm really picky when it comes to honey mustard. I think next time I'd actually even be crazy and add some craisins into it or dried cranberries. It may sound weird, but I think it would just add a nice sweet element to it. I don't know. That may be crazy, but I'm going to try it next time. Um, I also forgot to add the cheese into it, but you definitely need like a cup to two cups of cheese added into it. So that's what I was showing you there. But that is it for this What's for Dinner video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please make sure you check out my other videos and I'd love it if you subscribed. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys.